Alright, hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to do a part 2 tutorial of press E to interact. Kyle asked for this, so let's go ahead and get started. So, we currently are in a new base plate. We're going to go to start a GUI. We're going to create a new screen GUI by going right clicking, clicking insert object, and click on screen GUI. Inside of the screen GUI, let's call the name GUI. Alright, once you've done that, I have a decal that you're going to need, which is basically a simple circuit, circle. So what you're going to want to do is you right click on the GUI, click insert object, and then click image label. Now in this image label, scroll down until you see image. Just paste the ID that I get. Now just paste the ID that I left in the description. Press enter. And as you can see here, a little circle appears. What we're going to do is we're going to go to background transparency and set that to once now that we have a circle here. Now we can call this image label circle. Now what we're going to want to do is insert another object inside of the circle called text label. Set the transparency of the text label to background to one and then we can go to the te text. So wh whatever key bind you're going to use, so for ex this example I'm going to use E so we just put E. And as you can see up here, it says E. You can change the font to whatever font you want. So I'm going to use Source and Semi Bold. I'm going to bump up the text size to something around 50. Maybe a little bit bigger to like 70. Okay, that looks fine. I'm going to set the size to 1, 0, 1, 0. And there you go, you have that nice looking E. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to go to our start a GUI, insert object, insert a local script. Now that you've inserted that local script, a window should pop up. We're going to click on the local script and select a name and call this GUI script. So now what we're going to do is just remove everything inside of there. Now that you've done that, we're going to create a new part where whenever the player comes within range of the object, we will allow them to press E. So now what we're going to do is, once you've created that part, we're going to insert something called a billboard GUI. So let me just find that. So now we have a billboard GUI. What you're going to do is you're going to copy the circle by using Control C or on Mac Command V and do press Command V on top of the billboard and then just drag it onto it and also Control V for Windows. So as you can see, it kind of pops up, but it's inside of the parts. So now that you've done that, we're going to go over to our GUI and just remove it. So now go back to our circle here, and as you can see, it's inside of the part, so we want to fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the billboard GUI, go to studs offset, and set it to something around 0, 2, 0. So now that we have that, you can see that like the button kind of cuts off and also it's very dark. So what we're going to do is we're going to do like go to light influence in the billboard GUI and we set it to zero. So now that it looks much brighter now. So now what we can do is we can set the size of the pixels to much bigger. So 200 seems a bit too long, so we can set it to something around 100. And then set the size to 100, so that's an even circle. And there you go. So now I'm going to move this block a little bit up. We can go and anchor it. and. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the billboard GUI and go to the mass, max distance. It currently is set to infinite, which is a pretty big number, so we're going to remove that and we can set it to roughly about 20 studs. So now that I've done that, once you get from a certain range, it will no longer turn visible. But also remember whatever type of amount of studs away you set it to, remember just remember that number because you're going to need it in the future. Now if we just run it, you can see that it pops up at a certain range and it'll disappear out of other range. So I'm going to be using 20 as the range before you can press E. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our GUI script and we're going to create some variables. So the first thing is we're going to create a variable called local part, which is the object. This object right here, so we're going to call local part equals game.workspace.part. Part. Now that you've done that, we're going to create a new uh, variable called user input service, and it's equal to game 
get service, user input service. Now that we've done that, we're going to create one last variable, which is a player. So player equals game dot players. Go look at it. After you've done that, we can go to uh, character. Wait for child. Humanoid. Humanoid root part. So now that what that is, it's basically the root part of the character. So what we're gonna do is go user input service dot input begin connect function. Now on a new line, I'm gonna do if Oh, also in the parentheses up here, we said the key code. If key code dot key code equal equals enum dot key code dot whatever key you want. So for this example, I'm going to be using E, so E. Now we'll do then. We're going to do if bigger than the amount of studs that you said originally set it to, remember that number? So 20, then I'm gonna print E has been pressed. Now if we go and test it. E has been pressed, but if we get from a certain, we can no longer keep on pressing the E, but once we come back, it works again. So now that we've done that, we are gonna do the group parts. So this is pretty much what I literally just did from the last video. So the next thing is I wanna check if they're in this. What you wanna do is find your group. And as you can see, there's an ID of group. What you're gonna to wanna to do is go up to the URL. And as you can see, there's a group of numbers right after groups slash these numbers. So basically what you're gonna do is just double click on it and I'll select them. So control Z for, console, control C for Windows and command C for Mac. So basically we're gonna, now what we're going to do is if game.players.local player get rank in group just like that and then we can do parentheses inside of those parentheses just paste that URL is bigger than one bigger than or equal to then then we're going to do print player is in group and then we can just do an else statement, else print player is not in group. So now if you go and test it, I'm currently in that group, so it should say player is in group. So E, player is in group. So now what we can do is, let's say we change this group to some random numbers like this, some group that doesn't even exist probably. And we just go over here, press E, player is not in group. And that's basically it for this video. If you want to learn how to give the player a tool or any such thing as that, simply just watch the video before the one part one, which will be linked in also in the description. All right, guys, thanks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Bye.